everybody, Sarah here with the Big Blue House Homestead and today is going to be another canning recipe for squash because I'm getting tons of squash in and I don't like to waste it. And you can see my counter back here has some sporadics on there. That's because I've been cutting up the rest today. <laughs> Lots of squash coming in daily. Um, yeah, this one is for a zucchini squash relish. It's very similar to the cucumber relishes that you would make, but I like to save my cucumbers for pickles and making big spears and things like that. So this is easier for us and I enjoy it and my kids love it and it's a great recipe. I really hope you guys try it. By the way, if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe. I'm trying to put out a lot of preserving videos this year to show you guys how to keep all these harvests that you're getting from your garden as well as maybe you're going to farm stands and things like that and picking up large amounts of produce. This will help you fill your pantry and your freezers with all of that good stuff. So oven went off. That means my jars are ready to turn off and just cool a little. I like to get my jars sterilized and then I keep them in a warm oven to make sure they stay hot because I'm pouring a hot brine into the jars. Now I used six pounds of zucchini and squash, but it actually looks like a ton because I cubed it down. Let's go over here. It's been soaking in a little bit of salt water for about three hours and I need to go ahead and get it drained. Okay, so it's been soaking and I've come through and just stirred it. This just kind of helps it stay a little crisp. It's optional, you don't have to do that. And I like to go ahead and drain it and give it a nice rinse. So now that I have the ginormous pot in hand, let's get this going. Okay, now that I have it all rinsed, I put it back into my kettle. You just want a large bowl of some sort because we aren't cooking this. We're making a brine to put on top. So let's start on the brine now and we'll get the jars out and we'll get some canning done. Okay, I've got my water bath canner heating up in the background. Um, pots on the stove. I recommend using stainless steel or copper. Don't use the coated stuff. It's not real good for you to cook with for canning. And what we're going to add first, because this is a large batch of relish, we're going to add seven cups of water. All right, and now I'm adding seven cups of white vinegar. And like I said, this is a large batch, but when you start getting squash in, it's a great way to use that. All right, and because I'm making this as a relish, I did not have enough fresh dill, but I'm adding in a quarter cup of fresh dill and a quarter cup of dried dill. If you have fresh, oh, please use it. It tastes so much better sometimes. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my burner to medium, so this will start to cook. And then the next step is I'm going to add a tablespoon of ground mustard. and a teaspoon of turmeric. And now we just wanna slowly incorporate and let this come to a boil. Okay, I've got my jars out of the oven and I have my brine starting still. At this point, it's not fully to a boil. I'm gonna go ahead and add my salt. Okay, I'm adding in a third of a cup of salt you want to make sure you use a good salt, not an iodized. It will actually start to turn things in your jars weird colors, and you don't want that. So I'm going to mix that in real quick so it'll start to dissolve. All right, and then to my jars that I have in front of me, this recipe is pretty cool. It's a little different than usual, but I'm going to add a bay leaf to the bottom of each one, and if you have broken pieces, just, that's okay, add a little bit extra to it. And I'm also adding a clove of garlic. If you have smaller cloves, you can add a couple, that's okay. This is garlic I grew in my garden, so it's not as big as store-bought, but I'm all right with that. Okay, at this point I'm actually filling my jars, and I fill them all the way to the top. I have a little trick when it comes to packing them down in there. Don't overfill it too much, but just fill it up till it's to the top of the jars. I'll get the rest of these filled and I'll show you that little trick because the next step we're going to add the brine. So we're just waiting on it to come to a boil and getting all of this ready. So I'm gonna put a couple pot holders down to give some nice cushion to the countertop. I'm gonna take my jars and pick them up 
and I'm just going to bang them a little bit and see how quickly that goes down. So see how full this one is? Look at that. And that's why I say go ahead and fill it to the top. If you do that, that should give you exactly almost one inch headspace that you're going to need. And so I'm just going to get all these pushed down. Now I had a bunch left over and I put it into an extra jar. I always run a few extra jars just to make sure. And so any of these that go down too far, I can just add some of this squash into it. Not a big deal. Prepare yourself ahead of time so you don't end up messing up when it comes to filling your jars and getting your canning ready. All right, so I've got all the jars filled up to where they need to be. I've got my brine back here and it is basically come to a full boil. The brine in and let it settle. And I'm bringing the brine also up to the one inch head space because that's very important. And while I have my funnel in, I like to go ahead and debubble. So what debubbling is, is you're actually removing the air that's stuck in between the produce. So you go around your edges, pull it towards the center, move it around and get all those bubbles out. Okay, I apologize it will get a little noisy because of the water bath canner, but I've got a paper towel and just a fourth of a cup of vinegar and I'm going to dip my paper towel in and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to wipe the tops of these rims of my jars. What I'm looking for is to get a good seal on this red part, reddish brown part of my cans. So where that sits on the jar, I need to make sure that is 100% clean. Okay, so I wanted to share a couple tricks with you real quick before I get these finished. If you take your funnel and put it into the canning jar and you're coming over with your brine, get yourself a little plate or bowl. It's going to catch anything. And then you can move all across the jars and not worry about making a mess. And that's how I like to do it. But I'm going to finish filling these up real quick. Let me finish up this jar and I'll show you what I'm doing. But I can set my plate down and add my ladle to it. I can put my debubbler tool on it when I need to. And I can add my funnel to it so that I can keep my counters clean. Okay, I need to get my lids onto my jars before I put them in. You're basically just setting the seal on top and then screwing the ring on. And you don't want to do it too tight. Okay, so I've got my lids on. I'm now going to put my ring on. Be careful, the jars will be hot. And you just want to tighten, oops, sorry, until they seal. You don't want to turn them too hard. If you turn them too hard, it can cause buckling. So you're just turning them what's called fingertip tight. Same way you would close a mayonnaise jar. Okay, you can use your tongs or you can use your hands. Just load your jars in. Be careful, it is hot. You always want to be safe for yourself as well as when you can for your food. So I'm getting all my jars put in and I'm going to drop this down. I'm looking to get an inch of water over the top of these. Sometimes I come through short because it's boiled a while. That's perfectly fine. Just add a little more water. All right, now the next step is just to put the lid on and we are gonna process these for 15 minutes. After it's processed, we wanna go ahead and turn this off, but you wanna make sure this always comes back to a rolling boil. No matter how many times you flip jars in and out or you add water, this needs to come back to a rolling boil. So instead of leaving my jars in here, I'm gonna go ahead and take them back out and let this come back to a full boil first. Anytime you're canning, this has to be boiling. Otherwise, you start your timer from the beginning again. So let's get this going. Let's let it reboil and yeah, can these up. Okay, it's back to a boil, so I'm gonna drop this in and put my lid on and again, process it for 15 minutes. Okay, real quick, I ended up with a quart of brine left. This can just go in the refrigerator after it cools, and I can use that for the next batches that I do. I don't know how I was short. I apologize for that. I did kind of mess that up, but I still have all the pickle relish here and then what's in the canner. 
And like I said, squash comes in every day, so I'll have more to do later. All right, so my timer went off and I now have the jars pulled. Usually you wait about five minutes. This recipe never said to. So I've just pulled it out and waited till the boil went away. And now I'm just gonna remove my jars. I like to just angle a little bit and get some of that extra water off and move them down into a baking dish because I can move this when I need to for my counter space. Now, anytime you're canning, everything needs to sit on the counter for 24 hours before you actually do anything with it. So instead of having it sit here and take up all this room in my kitchen, I can just let it sit. And when I need the space, move the pan. I'm just gonna blot some of this extra water off because that's what I like to do. That's just optional. But I'm not pushing down rings or pushing hard on anything because I don't want any of this to actually I don't want anything to cause a false seal. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of these jars into here so they'll rewarm up while my water's coming back up to a boil. And hopefully we'll hear some dings here in a minute and that'll say that we have some sealed jars. See, it leaves some space, but doesn't that look almost exactly like pickles? You can do smaller dices if you prefer. I just like it this way, it's nice and chunky. So yeah, that's what we got going on. Okay, so that's it. I have just canned up a bunch of zucchini squash relish. And again, it's not your standard like you would have with other relishes, but it looks great. It's beautiful and you can eat it almost the same way. This is just a little bigger chunk. Um, yeah, we're just gonna let it ding, let them cool for 24 hours. I'll come back and check the seals and then put them in my pantry. Okay, so yesterday I actually canned the squash relish. And all I do is take my rings off. I never store with my rings on. And that's personal preference, but I think that stops these from popping if they need to. But in 24 hours, because it's been 24 hours, I just go through and kind of push up on the seal. It's not coming off. Perfectly sealed. And then go ahead and give it a good label and put it in your pantry. So thank you guys for stopping by. I hope that you find these recipes useful. If you want to do this dill zucchini the same way I did this one, check out the recipe because this is smaller dice. But if not, try this one as well because they're both very delicious. So I guess that's it for today, you guys. I'm gonna finish up this canning and maybe try to relax at some point. We'll see. It's been a busy day, but I will see you in the next one. Bye.